Speeding offences have hit new highs, according to data from the Automobile mm. Association. Yeah, almost half a million drivers have ended up in the dock in 2020, accused of speeding. That's the highest figure since records began. Easy pickings, I would mm. say. Easy pickings, uh, except if you come up against criminal lawyer Nick Freeman. Um, AKA Mr can, Loophole. Who can pick some of this stuff apart. Mick, forgive our cynicism, but you, you see it from the, the sharp end. Um, do you have suspicions like us that this is simply a revenue collector for local authorities? Um, in part, yes. Can I, can I just say, I think there's a, it's a quarter of a million, not half a million. Um, but ab absolutely, there's probably about half a million people ending up in court charged with a different variety of offences. But in terms of speeding, it's about a quarter of a million, which is a massive number. Nevertheless, it's the highest number, I think, since records have began. And this was last year. I think one of the big problems is in, in London, particularly and in other cities, um, the 20 mile an hour speed limit is causing huge problems. Um, because it's artificially low in most circumstances. And, you know, if I drive down to London regularly. You come off the M1, you get onto the Edgware Road, and uh, there's a slight decline, and you're constantly braking, 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 because the car actually doesn't want to stay at 20 miles an hour. So I'm not advocating against having a 20 mile an hour limit when there's a good reason for it, you know, school school um, opening and closing time, etc., etc. But just having blanket 20 mile an hour speed limits uh, across the city, I think um, the mayor wants to um, extend it to 137 miles by 2025. Other cities are following suit. And, and what is the point? And in my view, the, the, the statistics, the, the research shows there's no real improvement in terms of safety. Uh, and so many people who have never been done for speeding before, never committed an offence, are falling foul of this because it's literally, it's counterintuitive, it's very, very hard to stay at 20 on a fairly empty road, particularly when you're dealing with, with you, most, most cars are now automatic, you've, you've not got the manual change that will break a car. It, 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 it's very difficult and it doesn't really make a great deal of sense. So I think, I don't think this is a situation where people are willfully uh, trying to flout the law. I think it's people are innocently falling into the trap yeah. because it's artificially low. And you ask the question, well, what is the point? It does. There's no evidence to show that it actually improves safety. The point is it's a, it's a cash cow, isn't it? I, I would I wouldn't argue against that at all. I mean, uh, it, it's a huge source of revenue for, for councils who are really struggling financially. And, and you know, most motorists when they receive um, a notice saying, you, you know, you've gone through a camera, they look at the, the, the fine. They look at what happens if they don't pay it within a, a certain short time period. They've got the option of going to court. And, and most motorists decide, actually, I'm just going to roll over. I'm going to try and be more careful next time. And they have points on their license. Um, they get a fixed penalty um, if they've done a course within the past three, uh, unless they've done a course within the past three years. They, they just want to get on with their lives. Um, but it, it's, it's unfortunate because it's criminalizing people who have no real intent um, on, on committing offences. These are not people who are, you know, putting their foot down and, and driving in a, a deliberate, dangerous manner. And, and that's a completely different situation. There's a tiny minority. And obviously, when those appear before the court, they're dealt with not for speeding, but for dangerous driving and, and other associated offences. Um, I, I would take it as a personal insult. I've never had a speeding fine in my life. And if I was, I would see it as defeat. I would be really angry with myself with, with all of this. Yeah. Do you think there's any way, Nick, that you could reform the system or would you suggest a way that Absolutely. maybe we should be, uh, the, the education side of it should be brought in before the, the penalty side of it? What do you, what do you think? I, th I think there are a lot of things that could be done. I think education is always worthwhile. And these actually these speed, speed awareness courses are really useful. I mean, if you think about it, Eamon, we take our, we, we, we familiarise ourselves with the highway code when we're 17 or 18, when we're going to take a test and probably again when we're about 70, when we reapply, reapply for our licence. So for me, I, I would like to see um, a, a, some form of test every 10 years, and not a difficult test, but so that we show we're completely familiar. Uh, and, and in relation to that test, it wouldn't just be about highway code, but it would remind us about certain things that we need to do uh, when we're driving. I also think that speed limits need to be revised. I think someone needs to get hold of this and say, look, in certain times, Yes, we need a 20 mile an hour speed limit, but maybe a default position in city centres of 25 miles an hour is more sensible. And then on motorways, 
um, when the traffic is is light and when conditions certain conditions prevail, it needs to be faster than 70. That again is artificially too slow um, and people are falling foul of that because it doesn't make sense if you're traveling on an empty motorway in a car that will go uh, at a considerable speed quite safely to sit at 70 miles an hour. Yeah. It's ridiculously slow speed. Yeah, um, so there are, there are all sorts intuitive. of things that can be done. I, I do also think that the pr presence of police on the road would help. Uh, but when in the olden days, when you used to get stopped and the police would give you a, a sort of a warning, um, you drive away chastened and you take that on board and hopefully you drive a bit slower. Now it's all robotical. There's no personal involvement. Um, so the, the system I don't think is improved. It, it simply raised a lot more money and an awful lot more, more people are, are coming before the courts. Mm -hmm. which shows that it's not working. It shows that it's not working because I don't believe for one second that we're more hell-bent on committing offences and throwing our money away, having a higher insurance premiums yeah. and having points on our licence. It, yeah. it's, it's a system that's wrong. And, and, you know, it's revenue for the councils, but then it's an expense to the justice system. You know, we know how overwhelmed the criminal system yeah. is and, and it's a total waste of, of, of time and, and money, taxpayers' money as well. Um, Nick Freeman, we've got to leave it there. Criminal lawyer, thank you so much for giving us your take on all of that. And if at home uh, you think you've been unfairly given a speeding ticket or ended up in court, we'd love to hear your stories and all of that. So